a, a Starbucks. They have a patio, kind of yes. overlooks the, the plant. It's, it's a little bit hot for the plat patio right now yes. um, here in Dallas, but uh, but yeah, it's, you can. Yeah. Point to be noted, guys. That's how cool our professors <laughs> are here at UGD. <laughs> conversation with us, the director of the Ma uh, Information Technology and Management program here at JSOM, as well as one of the most dearest professors of all these students, Dr. Mark Thuin. Professor, before we start, I wanted to tell you that this interview is a little more special to me because uh, when I came to UTD, you were the first professor I had and uh, you were the first one who introduced me to the world of analytics and how to steer it using a programming language. So and I'm loving it. So uh, thank you for that. Fantastic. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for being here. And uh, I would like to say that, uh, you know, getting into the mind of someone is the best thing you can do because you can see the world according to their perspective. And that's what we are here for. So we want to know, since you are, you have been into this field since so long, we want to know your definition. What, what do you feel or what ITM is about? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for me, when I think about ITM, Information Technology Management, I think about applying technology to a business, right? So developing information systems to help a business run better. So whether it's analytics or uh, supporting the marketing function, the sales function, or maybe a manufacturing environment, right? All of those different business operations use information systems and technology to help them run, and ITM professionals um, help design, build, manage, and run those systems. Yeah, I think information technology has come a long way. We have information technology everywhere, especially here in US. Nothing is, uh, no field is left where information technology has not uh, set its, its foot in. So yeah. That's so true. And, but for students who are planning to think that, should I consider ITM or not? What is in it for me? So what would be your advice for that, like for students who are considering ITM? Yeah, so, so ITM is broad in, in, in that you have a variety of paths you can choose uh, as you move through the program. So there are a wide variety of career paths. Some people choose to specialize in cybersecurity, right? Or some choose to specialize in SAP, or some choose to specialize in um, analytics, and, and there are just lots of different opportunities. So, so when I think of IT professionals, um, many choose to specialize, but there's also a group that chooses to be more of a generalist. And, and so the, uh, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what students choose to do as they move through the program. And, and that's, that can be challenging sometimes because it, it's not just, you know, uh, check off all the boxes on this list and, and you're done, right? You, you have to go in with a plan or come in, uh, come to um, and, and look at your career and, and have a plan for your career in terms of how you want to grow and develop over time. And so I encourage all of our students as they move through the program to think about their, uh, their, their career and, and think about what type of job they want to move into after graduation. And um, that helps them stay focused on um, you know, planning their courses and doing the right types of things as they move through the program, right? So, you know, other areas that we have, we have uh, cloud computing, obviously that's a hot area for um, a lot of companies right now, so that's a, a track within the ITM program. Uh, we also have uh, a fairly new track in digital product management. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've uh, seen a lot of interest from students uh, wanting to become digital product managers. So, um, you know, again, it, it's just there are a lot of different choices in, in terms of the career one chooses to pursue um, with an ITM degree, and um, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you get there. Yeah, I think this is one of the problems when student come, uh, students come here, we have in mind that we want to do masters and then we'll get a job. But we never think yeah. that what do we want to do, like in what industry do we want to go, or the, specific, uh, the specific things of it. We don't really give it a thought. And that advice that this thing starts from the day one, that you need to decide this is the thing I want to get into and you need to have that in your mind and then go ahead with it is yeah. the best. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Professor, there are so many international students that are uh, that come every year to be enrolled in this ITM degree. Um, so, what, according to you, would be the do's and don'ts of the international the, the international students that come here? Yeah. So, so uh, do's and don't, don'ts. Uh, some advice, right? So, number one, do is is to getting to be engaged, right? So, so don't be passive um, in your classes. Don't be passive in your in your journey through the academic program. Right, engage and, and talk to your professors. Uh, join a student club. Um, participate in, in different activities around campus. It, it's uh, very important to do that, right? And and so, and I think most of our students, almost all of our students, do a, a really good job of being engaged and, right. and they're they're not passive and, and just kind of waiting for things to happen. So, you know, being proactive and being engaged is a, a definite do. You know, one one thing I, I kind of get a lot of questions about and I can just kind of see it in, in a lot of students when they first arrive is is there's uh, some hesitation some uncertainty almost a little bit of fear right because it, it's mm -hmm. it is a big journey a big step to say okay you know I'm, I'm gonna leave a familiar environment where I yeah. am and go study halfway around the world and and you know um, without ever setting foot in that area as well right and without really knowing anyone potentially either in that area as well and so I, I love the transformation our students go through. So in the beginning, there, there is a lot of uncertainty and, and just um, little doubts and questions about what, what's it gonna be like. And then, you know, by the second semester, you know, almost always, every student just has completely transformed. Right? I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a new home and, and, and they're comfortable, they're familiar, they're in a familiar environment. And that, that's fantastic to see. So um, it just, it's okay to feel you know uh, these doubts and and these uncertainties and and just it's, it's just kind of part of the process right of, of uh, when you when you have a new um, activity a new venture that you're, you're moving through right it, it's just gonna it's just gonna happen so just kind of be patient as you move through it and things will um, eventually become very good and very positive that's so. true and the fact that our program directors and uh, professors are with us so the journey is smooth and things go well yeah. yeah, and I think this is the problem of the education system back in our home countries because we have been uh, conditioned to believe that getting grade A is all up about getting the good career. If you if you didn't if you did not get a get grade A, you are not going to succeed. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest difference that I personally fa uh, uh, realized when I came here that no, getting getting grade A is not it's the not, not should not be your number one priority. Growing yourself as a person, developing a network, and doing the things you love. Yeah. I think that is the one thing that makes a change. Yeah. That's also sort of the answer that you have to be active in the program <laughs> and you have to explore stuff rather than you know get good grades. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And uh, so you have so many publications in your name. So I would like to know, I mean, which one is your favorite? Yeah. So um, I guess most recently, uh, some work I've been doing with Professor Bill Heffley comes to mind, and so we've been looking at um, how. Uh, simulations, so simulated environments, can be used to support um, education in the classroom. So in particular, we, we were looking at and are looking at a, an agile project management simulation. So you can kind of think of it as, as a video game. It's not quite like a video game, but it's a, a lot like it. And uh, students have a chance to role play in that simulation as a, a product owner, um, as a scrum master, and uh, as a developer and they they lead this team in a project and and they lead them hopefully successfully through the development of that project so so we've been looking at um, the impact that simulations have on learning experiences mm -hmm. and uh, the understanding of competencies uh, tied to different job roles so so what competencies are most useful uh, most helpful to be a product owner, for example. So, um, and that article was in uh, the Journal of Information Systems Education. So, so that was a uh, uh, one of the uh, the most recent articles that comes to mind. So, so yeah, I, I enjoy. I, I'm, we're still doing that. We're still working on uh, future publications. So, I'm I'm excited about that. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. Uh, also, Professor, you've been researching about the business value of IT, and we both. Uh, were very interested when we uh, read that. So, like, would you just give us some insights about that research? 
Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's actually going back to my dissertation, right? So my dissertation um, at, in, during my PhD program focused on uh, the business value of IT. And, and so when you think about an ITM professional, uh, an MIS professional, right, that, that really is what they're trying to do day in, day out. They're trying to help businesses get value from the systems that they look at. So, you know, one study I looked at looked at outsourcing the relationship between um, outsourcing information systems and the type of information systems. And it used a lens of transaction cost economics to, to uh, distinguish and, and help companies guide um, when to outsource and what types of things to outsource and, and to get the most value. And, and so that was, um, that, was going, that was part of my dissertation. That's a little while back, but uh, again, very interesting topic area. Yeah, it, sound, it literally sounds very interesting. Um, so, uh, hearing this, I mean, hearing to about your research and about the things that are going on gives us a lot of insights. So, uh, I would really like to know what are the current trends that are going on in the industry of information technology yeah. management? Yeah, so cloud computing, right? That's, that's absolutely huge. Um, when you think about running the information systems inside an organization, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years ago, most companies would buy their own hardware and uh, operate a data center. Uh, today, uh, just given the cost efficiencies in the cloud, uh, they're not doing that, right? So a brand new company is going to, to put everything they have into the cloud, right? And uh, companies that um, are, you know, have been running for a while are moving a lot of what they do to the cloud. There are just so many benefits with cloud computing. So it's really been a, a big shift, a big change, and it, it's um, only going to continue. So that, that's one area. Um, you know, I mentioned previously digital product management and digital product managers. That's another change that I think is happening. So organizations are increasingly identifying and assigning internally product managers to help maximize the value they're getting from their internal information systems. So I might have an accounting information system, uh, for example, and you know, historically, 20 years ago, let's say, right, um, there would be a group of people that would come together to help de define the system, the requirements, and then it would get built and, and implemented and so on. And it might be SAP, it might be something else, it might be PeopleSoft, whatever, whatever the case might be. But increasingly, the, um, the change is to have a single person uh, serve as a product owner, a product manager, and have that person make the decisions about what features get the most value, what features help the company get the most value. So um, that's a big change. You know, obviously that person isn't deciding on their own, right, <laughs> everything. They're getting input, but just by having someone accountable and focused on uh, you know that application or that app um, has has really been uh, a driver of success, and, and so that's a big change just in how organizations uh, structure their information systems departments. Um, so so that's another one, and then obviously data and analytics, right? It, it's it's yes. huge, and, and you, you can't talk about um, information systems without talking about business analytics or data and analytics, right? Yeah. And, and so that's another. A uh, huge area, uh, we have uh, a track and area of specialization in it, um, and, and so again, that's, uh, um, you know, data is everywhere and, and companies need help uh, <laughs> figuring out how to use it and how to apply it. Yeah. That was really insightful, Professor. Um, also, like, the like, how you're excelling in your professional life or how you are guiding the students is just remarkable. The students also want to know the the person Professor Mark is. So uh, we have some pop-up quiz for you. Sure. So yeah, yeah. Um, uh, like, let's start with the first question. What is the one thing that everyone should know about Professor Mark? Yeah, so uh, the one thing, only one thing, I guess a little bit about me, so I, I'll, I'll talk about my you family. Can give us, you can give us yes. a two, three. It, it, two, <laughs> three, okay, okay. So, so you know, I, I am married. I've been married for 23 years. Mm -hmm. I have a 21-year-old daughter and a 19-year-old son, so um, you know that's. Uh, uh, I've lived in Dallas now for right about 15 years. Love the area. I think it's a fantastic area to be in. 
Um, I've been here at UT Dallas for right about 15 years as well, so it's a fantastic place to, to be, and, and I'm excited to excited about the future as well. Um, so, so yeah, you know, I, I think when I think about just something personal about me, my family comes to mind, right? So, so that's that's one aspect that uh, you know I, I like talking about. I like sharing. If you ever have a question about my family, feel free to ask away. So, so um, yeah. So, fifteen years is a lot, and definitely UT Dallas is a fantastic place. We would love to know which is your favorite place in UTD. So my favorite place, so I, you know, the plinth, right? It, it's, um, it comes up a lot, right? It is the best. It, it's, yeah, and when I started, it, it, it wasn't here. It, it literally had, hadn't been built yet. And, and so the campus has really transformed. And, and so the plinth is a kind of a common central meeting area, kind of a crossroads, so to speak, of you know, how people move across campus. So it, it's near uh, some of the dining halls and the food court and the library, the student union. Mm -hmm. So as you're walking across campus, you, you almost always seem to end up at the plinth and, and or kind of walk past it. And, and it's a neat place. There's always something going on. There'll be a DJ middle of the afternoon playing some music. There might be a stand up comedian uh, telling jokes, right? There might be a student club or student org. You know, passing out flyers or events. There might be uh, just just lots of different things, and yeah. and chances are when you go there, you'll see someone you know too, right? Yeah. Can we and find you sitting there? Sitting so, <laughs> so you can, yes. <laughs> so so um, I think the last, yeah, 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 absolutely. So there's a, a Starbucks. They have a patio, kind of yes. overlooks the the plant. It's it's a little bit hot for the plat patio right now yes. um, here in Dallas, but uh, but yeah, it's, you can. Yeah. Point to be noted, guys. That's how cool our professors are here at UTD. <laughs> yeah. Also, Professor, um, apart from academics, what is the one cause that you're really driven by? So, um, the one cause. Yeah, that you hold the closest to your heart. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, you know, I guess I value uh, trying to be better each and every day, right? As as a person, as a human being. Um, personally trying to, to be the best person I can and um, also trying to help others around me right so, so to help everyone around me be um, as, as uh, you know as good a person as they can be right so, so it, it's um, yeah so, so that, that, that drives I think a lot of what I do right and, and what I what I try to do right so it's um, can sometimes be a you know, a hard goal to achieve, right? If you have a fantastic day and, and you know, to try and top that the next day. So it, it's really, uh, you know, just kind of being patient and just having a philosophy of, um, it, it really centers around, so there's a, a management philosophy called servant leadership, right? And, and so I, um, you know, first heard of servant leadership, uh, I don't know, 25 years ago, in one of my first jobs as a consultant. And um, it really resonates with me. So. Uh, that that's something um, kind of a guiding philosophy that I try and apply uh, in, in work and also in my personal life yeah and I can give a testimony to it so our class would be in the morning and we all would be very lousy or someone would have just woken up and be in their pajamas and as soon as professor entered the class he just brought that positive light into the class he just he always had a smile on his face even if he if he's sipping his coffee and we were me and my friends, we were always very fascinated by how this guy manages to <laughs> smile every time. Like no matter what happens in the class, throughout the class you can see him smiling. And that just, you know, these are the little things that you don't even know, it, it impacts your students a lot. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. So. And so does your advisors because you have come so far, right? You have been there, been a student, have, you have done that journey, right? So um, coming in advice or any insight is very helpful for students because uh, those words have gone through experiences, right? So we would like to know your one piece of advice for students who are coming to UTD. So how to, you know, maximize the resources they are getting? Yeah, so, so we talked about being engaged, right? And, and, you know, not being passive, being proactive. You know, attitude also, I think, plays a very big role. True. Having a positive attitude, a positive outlook on life, being uh, accountable and, and recognizing that, you know, you, we all have, you know, we all have uh, a big, a lot of control over what happens to us in our lives. So true. And, and um, if you, 
you know, plan and work hard, good things will happen, right? And, and so just kind of keeping that positive attitude in mind is, is uh, very, very important to do. And, you know, uncertainty and ambiguity, right? It, it's, um, I, I've met quite a few technology people and professionals, right? Computer, writing computer code, right? It's, there's a lot of certainty around it, right? You, you type and, and it, it, you know, produces a certain output, right? And, and so, you know, sometimes people that are technology professionals uh, may not handle uncertainty well, right? And, and ambiguity well. And so j just recognizing that life sometimes is gonna be uncertain and, and um, being okay with that and saying, okay, you know, I may not know what's going to happen six months from now, um, but I have a plan in place. I'm gonna work hard. And as a result, after six months, something good will happen, okay? And, and so it, it's, you know, Google, we, we have, um, so in the ITM program, we have an advisory board, and we also have a center for information technology and management. And um, the advisory board and center are responsible for outreach uh, to the local business community. So uh, we have an advisory board member who, um, who works for Google, and uh, she um, is a vice president with Google, uh, she's part of their cloud uh, GCP platform. And, and so um, she said during Google's interview process, one thing they look for is a candidate's ability and applicant's ability to handle uncertainty and ambiguity. All right, technology is changing so fast. Um, businesses are complex and, and you're just not always gonna know the answer to every question out there. You're not gonna be able to, to you know, predict with certainty the, best course of action every time. So, so just kind of embracing that and, and being okay with that at times and, and recognizing that that's the way things are gonna be sometimes. And that, that's to me is, you know, that mindset again. So it comes back to mindset is a, um, you know, a big, a big factor in success. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Professor, if you get a chance to be a young student again, what are the things that you would like to do? So, um, you know, the people, right? Make friends with the other students in your classes, right? Get to know people. Those relationships are going to last, right? And and um, they greatly affect your your journey and, and just uh, you know kind of everything about your life. So um, yeah, so so you know talk to people, engage with people. People are are I think very very friendly, open to discussion, <laughs> right? So so. Um, you know, to me, that's that's a big part. Yeah. Also, if not IT and teaching, what would we find you doing, like as a profession? As a profession, so so you know, um, consulting comes to mind, right? Oh. So and and just in general, I, I think I, I like um, solving problems. And when you think about what consultants do, a lot of times is they're they're brought in to to look at a situation, assess a situation, and. Uh, come up with some type of solution, come up with some type of, uh, you know, um, solution to the problem. That's great. And uh, especially I've loved the advice of having the right kind of mindset because of course the future is very uncertain and then we are pressurized with the survival of fittest thing, like you need to have that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's okay that things are going to be like that and you need to embrace that. That's a great piece of advice. Thank you so yeah. much for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Professor. It was really an insightful uh, conversation to have with you and we were very glad that you accepted our invite and yeah. you are here at the Musing Box to having a conversation with us. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Me. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you so much. So, till then, stay tuned yes. and keep watching the Musing Box. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.